Stay tuned for the latest message excerpt from josephprince.com. Years ago, I remember that uh, in 2003, we went for our Israel trip, and it was one of those trips that we had many people from our church going back to back. And, and what happened was this. I went with my leaders and the pastors, Pastor Lawrence and all the other pastors, Pastor Benjamin. We all went earlier. And then, during our, our trip, our journey somewhere, we received a call that one of our flights just landed at Tel Aviv, and there was an emergency. Yes. A, a girl by the name of Suwan, who was at that time just married, and she actually went unconscious, foaming at the mouth, which later on the doctors say she was suffering from deep vein thrombosis. You heard of that? Where, you know, you're, there's a clot, blood clot, all right? And this can happen, they call it the in, in, uh, economy class syndrome as well. But, but deep vein thrombosis, and the Israeli paramedics were there at the airport, and they brought her, and actually she died. Her heart stopped. They resuscitated her, okay? And by then, when they took an, an X-ray of her chest and all that, they found that there was massive clots in her right ventricle of the heart and also massive clots in her lungs. And the doctor says she cannot survive. This was said. She won't be able to survive. Moreover, she has been too long without oxygen to her brain. So that's what they told us. And I was like miles away somewhere else, away from Tel Aviv. We were already having our tour in the midst of our tour. So I told the, the pastors and the guys, I think, uh, let's go visit her. Um, and uh, we stopped over. So we went to the Tel Aviv hospital. And when we were there, uh, because of the, the way it was done and all that, okay, we were there. And she's been unconscious at that time for six days already. All right, we were somewhere else at that time when it happened, and they prayed for her. They prayed for her a few days after that. The husband prayed. The leader that was involved in that, in that group prayed, but there was no result. It was worse and worse. She was been in, in, in a coma for six days by the time we were at the, at the hospital. Somewhere fourth, fifth day, I felt the Lord telling me, usually, you know, you don't need Pastor Prince. How many understand that? You don't need the pastors. You know, if we are somewhere else, there's a leader in every group, and there are people who know how to pray. Amen. Sometimes I fear that y'all think that it, it, in the name of Joseph Prince, it happened. It does not. <laughs> look at me. Look at me. Come on. Seriously? All right? Look at Pastor Lawrence. Come on. <laughs> it's in the name of? Jesus. Yeah. And we have people uh, in, in groups and all that led by pastors, led by deacons, led by leaders, led by care leaders, led by believers who know how to pray in the name of Jesus. So uh, uh, when, when it came to the fifth day, I think uh, it was the fifth day, I realized there's no results getting worse. So I felt the Lord telling me to have communion over her. So we got some of the communion elements from my friend uh, Samuel, and we went to the hospital. A few of us, Pastor Lawrence was there. We, we stepped in, and the sight was actually in the natural very discouraging. She looked bloated. She looks swollen, all right? There are tubes almost coming out from different places of her, mouth, her, her face. And uh, Pastor Lawrence told me later on that, I know the Bible says watch and pray, but I cannot watch, he said. He had to close his eyes during prayer. So we all had communion, plus the husband. We all had communion around her. And we just declare that by the broken body of Jesus, life is released into her. That's all we did. We had communion, okay? We didn't cast out devils. We didn't do nothing, all right, of that sort. I'm not saying that, that that's wrong. If the Lord leads you, go ahead. But we just had communion over her. And then we continued our trip because she was unconscious for six days already. We heard the very next day, the very next day, she woke up. And then they tested her, and they cannot find any trace of the clot. Now, that's in my book on the power of Holy Communion. Today, she's, she's a happy mother in our church, uh, a mother of two now. And you know what she did after that? The very next day she woke up, all right, her first, uh, one of the things that she said that she wants to continue her trip. 
So after she, she was dismissed from the hospital, or after they do all the checks and all that, she was dismissed, she joined the next group. And her first trip was over at the garden tomb. Amen. Amen. Amazing lady. The next year, she went again for another trip. All right? So I wish that every case is as dramatic as this, but I'll just tell you this. Many a times, when you take communion, you know, sometimes the pressure is on us to like, you know, Mark eleven twenty four. believe you receive, and from now on, don't, 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 don't doubt, you know, you believe you have received. But sometimes that puts pressure on people who feel that their faith is not there altogether. Thank God for Mark eleven twenty four. but God has different delivery systems as well. Amen. All right? And one of them is that people can do this. Some people can go to surgery and believe God to, uh, that God will bless the surgery to be a successful one. Yes. Some can take communion, and every time they take communion, they believe they, they are improving. Yes. They're getting better. Amen. Now, this, to me, is one of the most powerful ways of healing. That's right. In fact, John G. Lake, a, a, a healing evangelist, he, he said that, that this, this kind of healing is better. For some reason, he says better than the ones you get instantaneously. Many a times, this kind of healing causes people to have character. All right, built in them. Whereas the other one, when they receive instantly, they can go back to their worldly life. So that's what John G. Lake says. But for me, many of the healings that I've experienced in my life has not been instantaneous. Like some of you heard me share that I have a, a skin condition for the longest time on my, my back. You know, I have a world vision. So there are mission places that I put behind my back. I got the world on my back, you know what I'm saying? You know, and it, it looks bad. And uh, it, it, you know, every time I sweat when I exercise or play soccer, you know, it will, it will really aggravate me. And I can look at the mirror and, you know, there's a map there. I don't know if Singapore is there, but <laughs> there are some spots. I just began taking communion for it, okay? Again, this is one great instance where, uh, to illustrate this, that I didn't know when I was healed. But one day as I was changing my clothes, all right, I heard a voice inside me. You should have, when you change, you don't look behind your back, you know what I'm saying? All right, many of you do, lah. You know, you look behind, wow, I look good from the back also, you know. <laughs> but I usually look at the front. So I don't know when it happened, but I heard a voice saying, look at your back. So I, I looked at my back, and man, the whole thing was gone. Now, I have this affliction for years, for years, but the whole thing was gone. So I don't know when it happened, you know. Was it the, the supplements I took? Was it this? But I, I just stopped myself. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. You took communion. By the way, if you're on medication, please continue your medication. Please. Okay? Your medication works so much better with the communion. But the thing is that many people, they, they have more respect for medication. They have more respect for radiation. They have more respect for all these things than a piece of bread and a cup. And they say, what can this do? They don't realize it is God's ways of choosing weak things to put to naught things that are like cancer or whatever. It's God's ways. This excerpt is brought to you by josephprince.com. To get the full message, visit josephprince.com. situation to God, all right, the world will shout, irresponsible. The devil will scream, you are being lazy, all right? You're not being accountable. But when you let go of a situation, God takes over. Remember this, when your hand let go, God grabs. When you grab, God lets go. We are sheep of His pasture. The Lord is our shepherd. And the Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not one, he's waiting for you to let go so they can enjoy the journey so that you will not be worried, you'll not be stressed, you'll not be burdened down. Jesus says, your only responsibility is not the things outside, it is inside. Yes. Let not your heart be troubled. You take care of that, your inside, 
and I'll take care of everything outside. He's literally saying, your greatest problem is your worry. Your worry is hindering all my supply and my grace. Let go.